Good morning everyone and welcome to Tata Games. Today we are actually going to discuss the heat that is on Unity vs Unreal, which is a video I uploaded a few months ago and we're going to talk about the nasty nasty comments. They are both nasty but also quite true. So let's do it. You see I'm going through them now and I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff which is it does not matter which one you choose they both do the same thing uh, this is not true they do not do the same thing they do it in completely different ways which is why some games in U Unreal and some games in Unity you can almost tell when one is made with either one now a lot of Unity games are said to be really shit that's because the popularity is a lot greater when it comes to Unity and Unreal obviously uh, is slightly less popular still very popular but the amount of shitty games coming out of that is not as big as the amount of shitty games coming out of unity we see this all the time however it is not unity's fault it is the creator's fault it is the developer's fault because they're the ones publishing a game that is obviously not to standard with every other game and even then it's not their fault they have to do it somehow when you're learning a game engine, obviously you're going to make a few crap games. Now, you have the people who are really good at um, promotion and really good at selling and think that that's the main idea that you're supposed to have whenever you create games. And that is the final idea. You do want to make money out of your craft. You do want to learn it. However, they start publishing games, uh, what some might say, a bit too early, right? They, they're publishing games whilst they're still learning about the engine and um, whilst they haven't made something that is up to scratch. Now there are places for this and Steam shouldn't be one of them. Steam is essentially one of the most popular distribution platforms out there and because of this... Have I got an ant crawling on me? Because of this everybody wants to be on it because they think that the game will become more popular if it is on that platform. And they are right, the game will become more popular. However, it could still be a bad game. So although it gets bad reviews, or maybe it gets good reviews, but it's a really bad game, that's because things are messed up. The Steam Greenlight doesn't work to the standard in which people should be expecting. It's not the most problematic thing in the world. However, it does sort of give a bad name to these Unity games that are incomplete, even though somebody's trying to learn them or do certain things. So the voting system will... Is pretty much never work and I think the only way they can counter this is if they have people hired to check out games and make sure that they are up to a certain standard in order to play. Another thing I do not like is of course early access stuff um, coming out a bit too soon but I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't like that either. However, it is very important to get the funding so you can actually finish a game. If you have an idea and you don't know how to get funding, then obviously selling early access is a good way to do it. So the fight here is between developers versus uh, publishers and versus consumers. For example, I can't hate a developer who's publishing their games that are unfinished. These are people who are trying to learn, obviously. You can't tell me that they don't deserve to publish their stuff because how else are they going to get feedback? How else are they going to grow as a developer? And I also can't get mad at the consumer. The consumer has paid for a product that they believe to be of a certain standard and if it turns out that it's not, it's not their fault for paying for it. Thus, people get the assumption that Unity makes very bad games. Unity has made some amazing games. Obviously, you developers know this, but of course the consumer side of you guys probably do not. You can't sit there and judge people for using asset flips and of course um, scripts and things that they downloaded offline or paid other people to do because these people don't know how to use the engine to its full potential. The people you should be judging are the high-end games. For Unity, you look at people like Moon Studios who made Ori and the Blind Forest, right? And you take a look at them because they've used the engine to a different capacity. They've used it in a different way. They've used resources that the engine actually has to offer. When it comes to Unity, like I did in the previous video, you use high-end games because you want to see what the engine is capable of. You cannot see that looking at indie titles. When I talk about indie developers, I mean amateur developers. Not saying that indie developers are amateur developers, just saying that is what I mean. You see, we could just as easily go into Unreal right now, spend about six hours making a completely crap game and giving it the worst possible 
assets we'll chuck some real shit at it you know and then of course we can go and publish that and then say unreal makes shitty games no the developer made shitty games it really should be damaging the developer's reputation when they start to upload stuff and start to try and sell things when it's not ready to be sold I can sit here all day and try and defend Unity, but we'll just move on to a few of the comments because they kind of spark a bit of heat. So ASAC says you can't compare engine features based on how games look. Most of the look is courtesy of the artists and the devs who made the game, not the engine's realistic picture. There is no such thing when it comes to 3D engines. Your picture is a compilation of assets, models, textures, animations, both engines will render the same model very similarly. Now, this guy is onto it. He's correct. The, it's basically saying the developers are at fault when the game is bad. The developers are at fault when the game is good. The engine plays very little part in the look of the game. I'm not going to lie about that. And I might have mentioned something in the previous video. I don't know. I haven't watched it for a while. Um, and obviously, if I did, it was wrong. When you start out in game development, you shouldn't even be thinking about all of this type of stuff, like which engine is better. You should pick an engine that is easy to learn, which is why I like to defend Unity, because Unity is easy to learn. There is no denying that the amount of content online made by the users is far, mountains more than Unreal. Trying to find tutorials on Unreal is very hard for very specific things, but when you want to look for something very specific on Unity, it is always there. I almost always find things I'm looking for. That is the reason why I'm biased towards Unity in that video, and probably all my videos uh, when I say that Unity is a lot better, is because I found it a lot easier to learn. Unreal may be familiar to actually a lot of people, and so when you start using the engine, you might feel a bit more comfortable using that, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just saying in my experience, Unity has served me a lot better than Unreal ever has. I only watched the 4 minutes and 30 seconds, so I don't know if it was cleared later, but you talk about Unreal only having blueprints. You know that you can code in C++. I know that you can code in C++. What I was saying there was that, because remember we're talking about people who are just starting out, so visual scripting is often very uh, useful for people who don't know how to code but want to learn the other aspects of game dev. Remember there are a lot of different elements to a game, so you can have musicians trying to make games, you can have artists trying to make games, you can have modelers trying to make games, and all of these people want to do one thing and make a game. Unless you're a programmer and you're making your um, learning game development, then you're not going to have struggle with using the engine. However, these people all think that they need to learn um, code in order to make something out of their art. But this artist obviously wants to make a game that excels in art. This musician probably wants to make a game that has great music or is music based. You know, they want to do different things. Um, and because of this, you know, you have to kind of give them a very easy route to do it. And I'm saying that Unreal Blueprints is actually very easy to learn. It's not hard, it's all algorithm. And um, it's, it's sort of easy to learn algorithm. Um, Playmaker for Unity as well is another one. It gives you the basics that you need. But it helps these people out, which is the most important thing, because you want to get them into the field, right? You want to get them working on stuff so that they are familiar with taking what they're good at and putting it into the engine and making something out of it. However, if you are into code and you want to do all of this stuff by yourself, like some stubborn people out there, including myself, who, who barely work with other people because it... I just find it struggle. It's a struggle. It just goes to show that you don't need to be an expert in code in order to make a game, but a lot of people are tricked into thinking that you do. Yes, maybe down the line you need to get a bit more advanced and learn these languages, but the idea behind um, talking about blueprints and um, uh, Playmaker was that that is what people look for when they're looking for a game engine, and that video was made for beginners, not for experts. Unity is pathetic at best. It is for these indie slash trash titles Steam is full of already. Unreal is for real games. Again, it's another set of ignorance saying that the engine has something to do with the quality of work that comes out of it. It's the developer's fault. Blame the developer, don't blame the engine. Just because Unity's logo appears at the start of every um, person who hasn't bought the full license or the who is using a personal license doesn't mean it is to blame. 
you probably couldn't even tell the difference between an Unreal and Unity game made by the same developer. Remember the artsy side, the programming side, everything comes from this place right here, the developer's mind, and it has nothing to do with the engine. The engine is just the tool they use to make the game. To be honest, I love both engines, they are tools, and you use tools as you need to in certain situations. You won't use a ruler to nail a nail, and you won't use a hammer to measure accurate distances. I like this person already. He pretty much sums up which the final point was um, how to pick your game engine correctly. Obviously, you want to pick an engine that is actually useful to you and useful to your project or useful to the product that you're trying to supply to someone. Now, when you start to pick Unreal and you want to make a 2D game, it doesn't make sense when there are engines out there that are made for 2D games specifically and have a lot more features dedicated towards 2D games. There is no point in making a first person shooter game in an engine like Unity when stuff like FPS Creator exists. It gives you all the tools you need to do that without you having to research too much into how to actually make a game. It is an engine made for the game that you want to make. So the idea behind it is that after you have done game dev for a while, you actually can seek out the correct engine that you want to use. You don't necessarily have to go with what the best engine out there is, the most diverse engine. You want an engine that actually caters to the game you want to make. So idea first and then pick an engine. Of course, if the idea is to learn a game engine, then pick a game engine that is easy to learn. Anyway, it's getting a little hot in here. Hopefully this clears up some problems that there were with the Unity vs Unreal video. I'm going to go and watch the Dunkirk film, which I hear is actually incredibly good. Not too sure, but I'm going to go have some fun. And hopefully you guys have an enjoyable evening. I will see you tomorrow when we talk about... I'm not too sure yet. But these daily videos might get a bit hefty and might talk about some weird stuff because we're going to run out of content pretty soon. Later.